All right, guys, how are y'all doing today? Today, we're talking about the worst things about Cedar Point. Uh, I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. Let's go. <laughs> Look who decided to join me again. She gets scared when I start yelling. <laughs> First of all, I have a couple of little disclaimers that I want to start out with. I do not in any way hate or not like the Cedar Fair Company or the Cedar Point Company at all. I love Cedar Point, absolutely, and I've built my brand basically around them in a lot of ways. Um, of course, I'm expanding a little bit and it's not just them, but I, I love Cedar Point. It's been a place that I've enjoyed and it's like my happy place right now. So I, in no way do I mean any kind of harm at all for Cedar Point. However, I do think they could fix a few things. Some things they cannot change. Um, it's, it's just absolutely impossible. Um, and some things they could pretty easily change. Uh, some things would cost a lot more money and some things, uh, it really doesn't matter if they change. It's just something that I think about. Um, our very first one is exactly that way. <laughs> so the earlier in this video a point is, the less important it is. Um, the later on in this video a point is, the more important it is. Um, so, or the more I think they could easily do this. Um, so basically where it converges that it's both easy for Cedar Point to do the thing and it is um, also important, I think very helpful for them to do the thing, um, then it's later on in this list. So if you really wanna see the important ones, go to the end of this video. Um, but if you wanna see my silliest answers, then uh, wait for just like a second here. Today we have with us a Moscow Mule. And I never take the stickers off. Eventually it'll fall off. You're learning too much about me today. All right, let's go. Okay, one more caveat. If you haven't yet, please press that subscribe button. Also, please let me know what you think of this series uh, down below in the comments. Also, let me know what things you would change about Cedar Point. Just pause this video right now and write that down below right now. What's the thing that you would change if you could? Just one thing. And don't make it mean-spirited. Say something that's constructive and helpful, you know, things like that. You don't need me to tell you, just find the thing that, that could potentially help Cedar Point instead of just going off about, you know, trim breaks for the next 20 minutes, okay? All right, let's go. <laughs> My number one thing, and also probably the least important thing ever, is you can't be shirtless everywhere at Cedar Point. Why can I not just take off my shirt wherever I want to at Cedar Point? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, I can't answer your call right now. I am videoing and I'm shirtless. So, anyway, <laughs> I don't like that. I want to be able to walk around with my shirt off wherever I want to. There are girls that basically walk around in bikinis for the entire day. Like, they'll put, like, leggings on or something. Don't tell me I can't take my shirt off, Cedar Point. You want to see all this. As a matter of fact, I think they tell me to button up because I think they're body shaming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't really think that. Our, our next thing is something that I don't think Cedar Point can really change a whole lot, um, but it's Grumpy Guess. Obviously, it's a little bit higher than the first one because they can change it a little bit with some of the things that I have lower down on this list, but it, you're always going to have Grumpy Guess. I don't care how much you change. I don't care how much of an oasis your place is. I don't care how perfectly you serve your customers. You are always going to have grumpy guests, no matter what. Things are hot, things are sticky, things are, um, but you, you have families that don't usually spend a lot of time together. They're spending all day together. You have families that have decided all day to go to the park and they have a two-year-old and that two-year-old is screaming and crying because they decided to skip that two-year-old's nap today and uh, that two-year-old cannot handle it. Um, th there's all kinds of things. The reasons why people are grumpy are not just Cedar Point's reasons um, or Cedar Point's fault in any way. Um, so with that, like, I mean, <laughs> you, you can't stop it. It's gonna happen. Um, I do think grumpy guests can be annoying, of course, because you can run into some people who are very unpleasant while you're in the parks. And uh, it's also annoying because those unpleasant people also cause unpleasantness for people um, that are working at Cedar Point, which in turn causes some grumpy workers too. We'll talk about that later on. Um, but definitely 
the two are correlated and um, it's it's just kind of a, a difficult thing uh, to mitigate for any large corporation, especially like Cedar Point, uh, where you have free free range people hanging out all over. Um, that's just that's just something you can't change necessarily. Height restrictions for kids is another one that I don't think Cedar Point can change a ton, but here's my problem with it. Um, at Kings Island, which is owned by Cedar Fair now, you have much lower height restrictions on rides. So rides that are actually more intense um, can get you on to, like you, you can get on it like, I don't know, 42 inches or something like that. My daughter had to wait a very long time to hit that 48 inch mark where she could actually ride a few rides that are very simple. You know, like Iron Dragon could pretty easily be a kid's ride. Uh, same thing with Cedar Creek Mine Ride, could very easily be a kid's ride. But instead, they have like very high height restrictions on it. Uh, so your kid needs to be basically like six or seven before they can even ride, uh, which uh, unless you have a very tall kid is kind of difficult uh, because they're they're looking at, they're like, why can't I ride but my friends can't? I also know that ride uh, height restrictions are really set by the manufacturer. So I, I'm not like saying Cedar Point has to change this, but I, I, it's, it's just, it, it, it is a frustrating thing. Number four, not enough theming. We all know I'm a theme park whore. So, <laughs> I love theming. I, I do love, at Cedar Point, you have the entire themed area of Frontier Trail and of Frontier Town. Those are great areas. Even Cedar Point's newest to this date um, themed area in the Val Raven area, it's not really themed to a thing. It's pretty, it looks nice, it's been redone, and it's very green and luscious, and I love that. But, what's the theme? There's really no theme. Uh, getting a theme, I love. I love being able to have that cohesive look, that cohesive feel uh, to a park, maybe have some characters that make sense in the area. Um, that's always really fun for me. So the boardwalk, I'm very excited about, and I do think that Cedar Fair is making a concerted move toward this kind of theming in their parks because every place I've seen redo an area has now been themed. Same thing with the boardwalk right now. So I'm excited for that for the future, but uh, more theming, please, Cedar Point, always. Number five is not the best drinks in the park. In a way, I feel like they could actually change this pretty easily. Um, I don't feel like it's necessarily important, but I do think it would help the guest experience. More creativity in both their food and their drink is really important. And my number six is that food is not very creative. Both ways, having restaurants that are actually like good, full service types of restaurants, having at least one somewhere in the park or maybe just outside of it, where you can really get a an experience. You know, even Kings Island has that with their like sky uh, restaurant where you can sit there and look out at the Eiffel Tower and have a great view and have a beautiful, delicious meal. Uh, in the same way, I'd love to see that kind of thing with Cedar Point, um, but it's not seemed to be something that Cedar Point has as a very important thing that they want to do. Um, so that's just a little bit frustrating to me because I'd love to see some delicious drinks and some delicious meals uh, that you can have rather than just kind of standard fare. There are a few places where I think the drinks are better. Um, you all know them, you know the Frontier Trail, the Trail Tavern, I absolutely love. Um, and there are some good places to get drinks, but a lot of them, it's just a little bit lackluster. And the same thing with food, so we'll move on to that one now. Um, with food, I'd love to see a restaurant that is just a really exciting experience, themed experience, where you can hang out, you can have a beautiful meal, um, and it's more of creative, fun uh, fare. Again, could be outside the park, could be out on the beach or, you know, up at the top of, of the newest building on the beach, you know, um, something like that. The Grand Pavilion may be a great option for something like that, but a place where you could get, uh, not, not even like steak, like we're talking like creative four-star dining, something like that. I'd love to see that kind of thing. Um, of course, I do need to go hit the uh, marina and uh, get some food out there. 
that may prove to be some place that has this kind of thing in it, but I'd love to get something in, along the way of more creative meals that we can eat at Cedar Point. Number eight is fast lane prices. Uh, fast lane prices are uh, very expensive, very expensive. And there's a reason for it. They need to be expensive uh, so that not everybody has them. Uh, what I wish Cedar Point would do is just have a very limited number. I, I think what Cedar Point is trying to do is depend upon supply and demand to keep people from buying fast lanes. So instead of limiting their number of fast lanes, they're just saying like, we're gonna charge you a ton so fewer people will want to get them, which is great, but there are enough people that they a lot of times still want to get them. So then you have horribly long fast lane lines while you still paid $220 for your fast lane. And that's just very unacceptable. Um, if your fast lane price is extremely high, then your fast lane experience needs to be extremely high also. And I don't think that that always happens. Um, and that regards our next point, which is fast lane convergence points. Um, there are a couple of rides. Th there are some rides where fast lane is great. Uh, one of those is Valraven. Valraven, you get into the fast lane line and that fast lane line takes you all the way to the station where you are then put directly in um, your queue for getting into the seat. Great, awesome. Um, but you also have Millennium Force and you have Steel Vengeance where that is entirely the opposite of the experience for the guest. Um, so you do have a lot of like, you've, you've got to wait in, okay, great. I didn't have to wait in a 30 minute line on this half, but now I do have to wait in a, in another 20 minute line for the rest of my fast lane experience. And that just is not a good way to do it. <laughs> it needs to be that again, if you're spending that much money on fast lane, you need to have a fast lane experience that matches your fast lane um, cost. And I don't think the two experiences match at this point. Um, so either fast lane prices need to come down or the fast lane convergence points needs need to kind of uh, get a little bit better. <laughs> we'll just say better, okay? Number 10 is something that I do think Cedar Point can do something about. And I do think that they are planning to do, at least word on the street, is that they are planning to do something about this. I don't know when, I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like, but it's extremely hot and smelly bathrooms. Um, the bathrooms in the park itself are pretty awful. And when I go in there on an extremely hot day, you're sitting there pooping with just like beads of sweat coming down your, your nose. Like, it's just, it's awful. And it's not because of the poop, it's because of the hot, <laughs> the hotness of inside there. But those bathrooms are like saunas. Um, so they just like keep trapping in the heat all day long and you're just extremely hot. I've even had times when it's been really cold in the park and because the sun's gone down, so now it's a little bit cooler, but I walk into the bathroom and again, you're dripping sweat right away. Um, not fun, we don't like that. Uh, we don't stand that in this house. <laughs> so any kind of update that they can do is awesome. Of course, until then, going to Hotel Breakers and spending some time in going to the bathrooms there is definitely, I think, your next best option. Number 11 is something I do think Cedar Point can do something about, but I also think that it's difficult. Um, so that's why it's kind of taking up the middle of the list here. And that's pot smoke. Um, I see a lot of people smoking pot and I smell a lot of people smoking pot when I'm in the park. Um, I don't know exactly what to do except for maybe having some security people who could maybe help more specifically with watching it. One big culprit that I've seen has been just going to uh, the Scrambler and I'll be in line with the scram for the Scrambler with my daughter and I'm smelling pot smoke just like crazy and they're hiding right behind the shed. Like I can look back there and see them doing it. And so it's like, I'm smelling your pot. I'm looking at you doing it where are the professionals around here who are working here? Not to call out the workers at Cedar Point because I really love the workers at Cedar Point, but 
can nobody make a call? <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, can we not call security and just be like, hey, there's someone smoking pot. I realize you can't leave your station, so I understand that. But maybe some greater or tighter security measures to try to mitigate the amount of people smoking pot in the parks uh, maybe would be helpful. Um, you're just you're just smelling it a lot and especially if Cedar Point is wanting to become more of a family friendly kind of a park I don't think that's the kind of reputation that they want to have of being the place to go smoke pot now I realize there's also a very young adult audience uh, to it too but it seems like they're going also for more of a family audience and in that case you're you're not wanting this uh, to be to be the experience that you're gonna have. Next though is number 12, which is grumpy workers. Of course, me saying that kind of thing about a worker is not necessarily the most helpful thing to not have people be uh, grumpy who are working there. Um, and I've definitely seen some people just chew out workers at Cedar Point. Cedar Point is still recovering from the pandemic. Now, I don't wanna just use that like, they're a corporation, it's Cedar Fair. Uh, they're, they're a corporation recovering from the pandemic. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to people who are working there, uh, they have a lot on their shoulders. They have a lot that they need to do. Um, and it's not their responsibility. It's their responsibility as their job, but it's not their responsibility to carry, you know, three or four different loads on their back because there aren't enough people working there. Um, so I understand some some grumpy uh, workers. Um, I have had someone who just like, I, I had a tiny little thing, it was about this big in my pocket. And he just was like, what's that in your pocket? And <laughs> he wouldn't let me take it in. I showed him it fit in there and all of that. And he was very mad. And then I just went over and he was like, you have to go buy a locker. And I was like, but it fits in my pocket, you know, like I, I did go, go put it. I didn't put it in the locker, but I did put it in the bushes. Um, and I think it got stolen that day actually. Um, but he was very grumpy and I, that was annoying to me because I've never seen someone tell me that I couldn't take that little, whatever it's called, selfie stick or what it's not called selfie stick, but whatever. I, I've never had someone tell me I couldn't take that into the park. Um, so that was frustrating and it was more frustrating that his attitude was just uh, like he was very annoyed that I even would consider taking it in with me. You know, like that, that was annoying to me. Uh, but you have, you have some grumpy workers and that can uh, dull the experience a little bit. I also have a friend who went on to steal vengeance and had a, a thing in his pocket that was his little wallet. It was a very thin wallet, but... He had it and it, it zipped. So he was like, I should be able to take it on. And they they found it and he was very upset with that. Um, and that does take me to another part um, that we'll talk about later on about uh, line procedures. Uh, number 13 is no taking video on rides. I respect it, 100% I respect it that you don't want us to take videos on rides, but Cedar Point, I think you're missing a great opportunity. And this is where I'm talking about like what I think would be best for the company, not what I think is just best for me. Because obviously I, you know, I come to Cedar Point, I've come to Cedar Point for the last two years and I'm not taking video on any rides um, that as long as I knew I wasn't supposed to. Like there was, I think there was one where I ended a ride and took a video at the very end of it and uh, at that point, they weren't yelling at you or telling you not to do that. And at that point, I don't know if that was allowed or not, but that was in 2021. Um, but in 2022, when they really have cracked down on it, I was like, okay, yeah, no, we're not gonna take any video either at the beginning or at the end of a ride, no matter what. Um, but I think they're missing an opportunity because there is so much free publicity to get from influencers um, of the park and of the rides and uh, discussing the rides and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you're still getting influencers who are talking about you. So maybe you don't need it and that's okay if you don't need it. But having those uh, that ability, I think does deter some influencers from coming and being in the park, which I think maybe causes more harm than good for Cedar Point as a company altogether. 
The next one is number 14 and it's Cashless Park. And we're right toward the end at this point. Um, Cashless Park, it's pretty awful. <laughs> there were times when I didn't even have, like I had cash, but I couldn't get a card because there were no cards in the machines for me to get the cash with. That's a big issue. Like you can't let that happen ever. And so it's just like, that's, that's so frustrating to me because you're losing out on any kind of money that you could get uh, because you're dedicated to being cashless. And being cashless, first of all, I just think it's counterproductive, um, but you have people with money that want to spend it, allow them to spend it. <laughs> like, that's just my thought. Obviously they have their reasons and I, again, well, respect it. Obviously, I have to respect it. Whether I want it to or not, I have to respect it. But I do think it would be better for Cedar Point to not go cashless than to go cashless. But I usually have a card. It doesn't really affect me a whole lot anyway. Um, just one time I lost my card and we had an issue then. Number 15 was ride procedures inconsistent. Um, so inconsistent ride procedures are an issue. Um, I, I hate it that when you walk in, there are some, like like there's this thing that goes over the PA system with some of the rides where it'll say like, it's not allowed to, to take pictures on any ride at all at Cedar Point, which isn't true. It is okay to take them on the merry-go-round. It is okay to take them on uh, on the, the cars, the Cadillac cars. It is okay to take them on a couple of the slower moving uh, rides, but like, like the giant wheel also, um, but it's not okay to take them on everything. You can take them on the train, but you can't take them on every single ride. So I, again, it, it's inconsistent there, first of all, but then it's also inconsistent otherwise, uh, with other things. Now, my thought is that going back to the, the camera situation, taking video, it would obviously need to be regulated. You need to have some sort of thing that would actually like connect to your wrist or something so that you're not going to lose the thing and then end up with your camera hitting someone else in the face. That's where I completely understand the no camera policy because you don't want to end up with a GoPro hitting someone else and causing a concussion on another person because that ride is going 90 miles per hour. I, I completely understand that and you, you don't want that. Um, as a company or as a person, you don't want that. Uh, so Cedar Point is protecting us as far as that goes. However, there are also some other ride procedures that are very frustrating. For instance, some of them you can take bags on. I did a whole video about which ones, which rides have like lockers where you can put things in or boxes where you can put things in uh, during the ride. Some of them you put them in the ride itself. Some of them you put them in a box. Some of them you have to take your hat off for. Some of them you don't. Some of them you can wear glasses, but some of them you can't. It's, it's just a mess. There's so many and every single one is different. So then you get a ride operator that's upset with you because you didn't understand what the actual instructions were. Maybe you weren't paying attention but it's different all throughout the park. So I understand that frustration. And I do think that'd be something that would be pretty easy to make consistent all across the board where it's just, you can't take anything on or whatever it is with every single ride, no matter what. Or maybe you, you have a certain set of rules for taking specific things. Uh, but again, it, it carries throughout the park. Uh, number 16 is line jumping. Line jumpers are awful at Cedar Point. I see them all the time. And usually it ends up being someone who's like a dad or like the like the the placeholder of the like teenager group. And then you end up with five kids jumping up in line in front of you when you were already pretty close to where you needed to be. And it's very, very frustrating. Sometimes I've seen them walk right past workers and it's just like, they just don't care. They're just ignoring it, which I understand. I mean, when you've seen it a million times as a worker, you're going to kind of just be like, you know what, whatever. I can't stop every single day. I don't want to get in a fight. And I understand that. Again, that goes back to grumpy guests. So I get that, but it does definitely lessen the experience of the guest when you're having that happen frequently throughout your day at Cedar Point. Number 17 and the penultimate point, I guess, 
is the Cedar Point app. The Cedar Point app is awful. I don't know what it would take to change it, but again, it's a national company. It shouldn't be that hard to get someone who can help you with your app. Um, it's it's pretty awful. Like th there have been times when rides are closed and it says open. So I walk all the way back to them and that's like as simple as it gets. Not to mention, of course, there are times when the ride says 15 minutes and I end up waiting 45. And that's always extremely frustrating also. So uh, someone who can run the app a little bit better and who can make consistent updates. It does frequently say it's been updated. It's been updated five minutes ago or whatever. But is it really current? Because I think it may just be updating the numbers that have already been fed into it. And a lot of times those numbers are wrong. So if it says it's been updated five minutes ago, I'm expecting it to be the right length of time uh, that it was five minutes ago. So I understand if there's a small error, but when the error is massive, that gets real frustrating real fast. And the very last one is no warm drinks during Halloween weekends. I think this is the convergence of easy and of <laughs> a great customer experience that's really gonna help you because it's so easy, but there's no warm drinks, <laughs> none. There are restaurants all over. There are places where you can buy things. Kings Island has all kinds of warm drinks. Take a page out of their book, but why are there no warm drinks? So I'd love to see a warm drink during Halloween weekends in particular, because it does get pretty cold and you're walking around with a glass full of ice when your fingertips are already frozen. And that's pretty awful. <laughs> so give me something warm. Give me a hot toddy. Give me something uh, just so that we can do that. So I'm going to keep hitting that one for a long, long, long time. But thank you guys so much for watching today. Um, I, I love being able to talk about Cedar Point. And like I said, I love Cedar Point. I'm not mad at all about Cedar Point. And uh, obviously I've, I've still been making videos on them. I love Cedar Point and I cannot wait to go back this next year. This is not meant in any way to be harmful towards Cedar Point or to stop you from going or anything like that. It's just a few suggestions that I think Cedar Point can do better for next year or the, or the coming years um, for some of these. And of course, I don't expect all of these to be remedied either. They're not going to be remedied all in one year by any means. Uh, that's just not the way any corporation has ever worked in the history of the world. Not all of this is going to be remedied. But if Cedar Point takes maybe one or two things and they just update something a little bit each year, I think, you know, like that's, that's the best they can do. So I love to see it any time that I see them just making strides forward in whatever they can. And again, I'm, I just talked about that in uh, two of my last videos for, for this beer and a theme park uh, series. So check those out if you would like to. Um, tell me what you think about this series and tell me what you think Cedar Point can do better. I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching today and let's go! <laughs> Subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. I, I Yeah. Anyway, let's go.